The Philadelphia Eagles could be in serious trouble with AJ Brown appearing to suffer a right knee injury on this play and then Jalen Hurts suffering an injury to the middle finger of his throwing hand. We'll talk about both injuries in this video. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal in the channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. Let's start off first here with AJ Brown. Of course, it's a little hard to understand exact severity when we're talking about a game where yes, it matters to the Eagles, but they're gonna have a different threshold for letting guys come back in and play. And so it's hard to know really if this were a different game, if this were the playoffs, would we see A.J. Brown back out there or not? But of course, the injury we're talking about here is to his right knee. And what we have to think about is the valgus position, the inward stress that gets applied to his right knee as he gets tackled here. So as the Giants defender takes him down, in this position, everything is in a nice neutral plane for Brown's right knee. But then as the Giants defender falls down, we're going to see that cause his right knee to look like it buckles inward a little bit. So right from this position, into there, we get that little bit of forced valgus position on his right knee. We can see it a little better here, but just have to look through the graphics. And again, in this position initially, Brown's knee is in this nice neutral plane. It's not bending inward. Then as the Giants player comes down, we see how it goes down in this direction. That's going to be a valgus load. A valgus load is a load that comes in from the outside of the knee, pushes the knee inward. And in this case, the thing that I would be most concerned about would be an injury to Brown's MCL. Now, this is also a way that you can suffer an ACL injury, but I don't necessarily see any of that shift in the knee. And we did get some reports that it seems like his ACL is intact. So I still would be concerned about an MCL sprain in Brown's right knee. All right, next, let's talk about Jalen Hurts finger here. No, he is not giving a one fingered salute here. He's just showing everybody what's going on with his finger. And what we're seeing here in his middle finger is what we call a swan neck deformity. And a swan neck deformity is when you have hyperextension at this joint right here called the PIP joint and flexion at the DIP. So essentially, if we kind of try and mimic it, it's really hard to do, but that's going to be a swan neck deformity as opposed to the other one we talk about as a boutonniere deformity, which is the opposite. That's where you have hyper extension at this DIP joint out here and flexion at this PIP joint. So this is a swan neck deformity. We can see it a little bit better in this view as Hertz was walking off the field. Again, this joint right here is going to be between the proximal phalanx, then you have the middle phalanx and the distal phalanx. So this joint nearest to the body is going to be the proximal interphalangeal joint, the PIP. This joint right here is going to be further away from the body, so it's the distal interphalangeal joint, the DIP. So what we see is extension of this PIP joint. We see flexion of this DIP joint, which is classic for a swan neck deformity. There's a couple different things that can cause an acute swan neck deformity like this. Unless there's a major fracture, I don't think this is gonna be something that would keep Hertz out. Now, certainly he's going to have to wear some sort of a splint or taping at least on those fingers, but I don't think it's gonna be an absence. It just might have a little bit of bearing on his throwing depending on how much he's relying on that middle finger. We see pretty clearly when this injury occurred as Hertz goes to release this pass, the other player from the Giants comes through and his right hand just lands essentially straight onto Hertz's throwing hand. And we can't see exactly which direction his middle finger got bent, but of course this is going to be the play when there was some trauma there. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, let's first talk about the finger. So there's a couple of ways that you can get these swan neck deformities. First of all, there's a structure that sits on this, what we call volar side of that joint called the volar plate. If that volar plate gets injured or has a lot of laxity, you can develop that hyperextended position of this PIP joint, and then also some flexion out here at the DIP. Now, the other way that we can see these is if you have a type of mallet finger injury where there's been injury to this tendon right here, which then prevents that finger from extending upwards, so it drops down at the DIP joint into flexion. But you still, in order to get that hyperextension at the DIP, you either have just a poor balance between some of the components coming in with these lumbrical muscles going up that cause additional extension at that DIP joint, but often we're gonna see some disruption or weakness of that volar plate. And so in Hertz's case, he very well could have some component of a mallet finger out here. So tear of this distal extensor tendon that straightens the tip of the finger. But I'd also suspect that there's some disruption of this volar plate on the underside, possibly from like a dislocation or just the way that his finger got jammed. Again, not something that necessarily at this point of the season is going to be surgical. You can brace, you can tape. We saw Hertz come back in with those fingers taped, but definitely could have an impact because of how it's on his throwing hand. Wouldn't expect him to miss time though. For AJ Brown then, when we talk about the MCL, the MCL is the big ligament that sits on the inside of the knee. So right here highlighted in yellow, running between the femur and the tibia, this guy right there is the MCL. You can remember when that Giants player came in and hit his knee, he hit him from this side. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna push 
that joint inward, which is going to put tension and stress on that MCL ligament, potentially leading to a tear. For Brown, the time he misses depends on number one, if there's any associated things like a meniscal tear that we see on the MRI scan, and then just how extensively torn that ligament is. If we're talking about just a mild sprain where there's just some stretching but no real significant tearing of that ligament, potentially put in a brace, he might even be out there and not miss any time. If we're dealing with a higher grade, like a grade two or grade three, that's gonna be a multi-week absence. And when we get into the playoffs, every week matters. And so while I don't think it would be a surgical injury, necessarily rule him out for the whole playoffs, I do think this could have an implication on him going forward for at least the first or second playoff game if this is more than just a mild grade one MCL. So overall for Hertz, I expect him to be affected by this finger injury, but I would be surprised if he ends up missing any time unless an x-ray shows some more substantial damage than we first heard about. And for Brown, I think it comes down to how extensively injured that MCL is. If it's more than a grade one, expect him to miss the first round or the second round of the playoffs. If it's just a grade one, he may be able to brace this up be limited somewhat in the brace depending on how much it hinders him, but still be able to give it a go. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.